Unlike the armies of many countries around the world, China's military, the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, has been an army of the party since its inception. Above all else, its purpose is to ensure the survival of the communist regime, and when faced with a split within the party, it splits too, each protecting its own bosses. Beijing claims to the outside world that China has 2 million active duty soldiers, the largest regular army in the world. It also has the world's second largest navy in total warship tonnage. Coupled with a trinity of nuclear strike capabilities consisting of missiles, submarines and bombers, it's the largest military force in Asia. However, it's been noted that the PLA has been relatively cautious in its actions over the past few decades, quietly expanding while avoiding provoking the US and its allies into military conflict and avoiding the formation of a global anti-communist alliance. This cautious behavior can be seen as a strategy of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, but it also reveals an unspeakable secret, namely, the real combat power of the PLA has been seriously undermined by the pervasive corruption in the military and the turbulent internal conflict within the party. Let's look at the extent of corruption in the Chinese military. In the 10 years since the new Communist Party leader, Xi Jinping, launched his anti-corruption campaign in 2012, more than 160 generals have been investigated. This is more than the total number of generals who have been killed on the battlefield in the 100 years since the founding of the Communist Party, including the war with the Kuomintang. And judging from the cases of these generals investigated by the Chinese government alone, the corruption of the Communist Party's military can be said to be the first in the world. To complement Xi's anti-corruption campaign, China aired an anti-corruption TV series titled In the Name of the People in 2017. The scale of corruption shown in the drama is unprecedented and has echoed tremendously in Chinese society. At the time of the premiere, the scriptwriter of the series described how he felt when doing research for the show, saying, Look how serious corruption is now. It's bad, beyond words. It's too dark. When army officers run the military drill, they can sell the military vehicles as scrapped equipment. They also sell gasoline. When obviously only 10 shells were fired, they would report 100 shells to embezzle money. Positions in the army can be sold from squad leaders all the way to generals. I didn't believe it at the time. Now I do. Among the top military officials who have fallen, the most well-known are the two vice chairmen of the CCP Central Military Commission. From the official communist briefing, the first major crime of Xu Tsai Ho was selling military positions. He was in charge of appointing and removing senior officers of the military and armed police forces in the millions. A well-known Communist Party general revealed that Xu told the investigators, Of all the senior generals in the entire army, there are only two who haven't offered me bribes. In 2014, Chinese media outlet Phoenix Weekly reported that in the basement of Xu's 2,000 square meter mansion, investigators were stunned by what they saw despite being mentally prepared. Cash was piled up all over the place in dollars, euros, renminbi, and other denominations. The investigators couldn't count it all. They had to take a scale and weigh it, then put a seal on it. The cash seized was over one ton. Some of it was still in packages, unopened. There were also valuable ancient paintings and calligraphy from different Chinese dynasties. From this mansion alone, the investigators had to call in more than a dozen military trucks to transport all the seized belongings. Xu has a number of other mansions around the country, some of which occupy several acres of land. In addition to money, subordinates in the military also bribe their superiors with sex. According to General Liu Yaozhou, a high-ranking official not only offered his superior female singers, actresses, and hostesses, but actually offered his own daughter as well. When his boss and his daughter had sex in the room, the man was sitting outside the room. Surely, he was generously compensated. In a later investigation, it was reported that he embezzled 3.2 billion US dollars while working at his job as a logistics minister. Hong Kong's Trend magazine reported in 2016 that according to CCP internal documents, Xu Tsai Ho irregularly promoted more than 80 women to serve in defense and military departments from 2000 to 2012, many of whom had sexual relationships with him. Xu died after his arrest from what was officially declared to be a form of cancer, but some sources revealed he died of AIDS. Before he died, Xu said, Gu Bo Xiong's problems were much more serious than mine. Guo was his predecessor, working as the vice chairman of the CCP Central Military Commission two years earlier. According to Xu, more senior officials and generals offered bribes to Guo than to him. 
The Chinese media reported that Guo embezzled some 3.2 billion U.S. dollars, which came from proceeds from selling military positions and land, as well as receiving kickbacks from army-wide procurement of weapons, equipment, and ammunition. Guo, who is in his 70s, is also lustful. Anti-corruption investigators have found more than 500 pornographic CDs, more than 120 pornographic magazines, and nine fake passports from his residences in several cities. In 2015, the Wall Street Journal reported, citing claims from PLA insiders and military experts, that buying and selling positions have permeated the entire Chinese military over the past decade. Different positions have hidden prices, such as those at the general level, costing at least 1.57 million U.S. dollars, those at the major level costing more than 790,000 U.S. dollars, and even to enlist as an ordinary soldier, costing 1,500 to 3,000 U.S. dollars. Retired Chinese officials are quoted as saying that those who pay for positions will seek to recoup their investment. For a long time, the Communist Party's military has been more of a giant enterprise than a combat force. The military owns factories, hospitals, and real estate, all of which are opportunities for corruption. The border guards can smuggle guns in the process. The army guarding forests siphons off forest resources. The army guarding minerals embezzle mineral resources. Some analysts believe that the corruption of the Communist Party's military stemmed from the previous CCP leader Deng Xiaoping's decision in 1985. He allowed the PLA to engage in economic and trade activities. However, we believe that this was just a trigger. At that time, Deng decided that 60% of the army would be financed by the state and the remaining 40% would be left to the army. As a result, the CCP's military research units moved into civilian industries, such as building airplanes, cars, and even air conditioners. China's famous Changhong Electric was formerly a military research institute that produced radar. The Navy and Army have opened economic and trade companies, such as China's largest arms company, Poly, which was established by the General Political Department of the PLA. What is the most profitable part of overseas trade? Smuggling. The Chinese military started smuggling on a large scale in the 1980s. In September 1998, the then Prime Minister Zhu Rongji said at a meeting, In recent years, the annual smuggling amounts to 125.8 billion US dollars, and the military is a major player with 78.6 billion US dollars. If one third of the total amount is taxed, the evaded tax amount collected by the military is 25.2 billion US dollars. This money doesn't subsidize the military, and over 80% goes into the private pockets of military officers at all levels. In the early 1990s, Jiang Zemin, then CCP military chairman, was forced to announce a step-by-step -step overhaul of the military's business operations. In 1998, he announced a complete ban on military business. But, because Jiang had never fought in a war, had never held a gun, and had no authority in the military, he had to rely on corruption to bribe the head of the military. The military was never really banned from doing business. Instead, Jiang pulled a trick and indulged the military to do business under a different name, called the Military Paid Service. Under this brand, the army can continue to amass wealth. When Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, he made the decision to completely stop the military's paid services over three years. He also began a massive campaign against corruption in the military at almost the same time. In the past 10 years, in addition to the 160 generals mentioned above, another 18,000 officers at the rank of colonel level have fallen from grace, and some officers have committed suicide in fear of their crimes, but they aren't officially included in the statistics. Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign among the military, which began in 2012 and has continued unabated, proves that corruption in the Communist Party's military is a systemic and institutional problem rather than sporadic cases. The real root cause of military corruption is that the military, which normally serves the country, serves the party, or individuals, or a particular faction within the party. Even the party leader or head of state doesn't dare to exercise real control over the military, but rather grants it privileges. In an authoritarian dictatorship, whoever controls the military controls the country, even if he isn't the nominal head of state. Jiang Zemin's real partner was the vice president, Zhen Qinghong, rather than the premier chosen by the previous CCP leader, Deng Xiaoping. After Jiang stepped down as party leader, he was succeeded by Hu Jintao. During the 10 years of Hu Jintao's rule, power was almost completely hollowed out because Jiang was, in fact, in control of the military. 
In 2008, after the Wenchuan earthquake, then Premier Wen Jiabao rushed to the devastated region and ordered the army to open the road to Wenchuan. But the Chinese military, following Jiang's orders, was slow to act, even using bad weather as an excuse to stay put, causing the rescuers to miss the 72 hours of golden rescue time. Xi Jinping's massive anti-corruption campaign is mainly aimed at cleansing Jiang Zheng's faction of its power in the military. Now Jiang is getting old and in his 90s, but Zheng Qinghong's forces are still in place. So, does Xi Jinping now have control of the military? Xi Jinping, like Jiang Zemin, has no history in the military, so it's difficult for him to take control of the military. Xi Jinping's continued centralization of power and crackdown on corruption since taking office has threatened the political and economic interests of the second generation of the Communist Party's elders, the princelings. Xi has used every opportunity to swap people in the military. On January 21st, 2022, Xi Jinping promoted seven generals again, roughly completing the staffing of the five major war zones of the central, northern, southern, and western regions, and the five major military forces. The only one that hasn't changed is the commander of the Eastern Zone. The Eastern Zone targets the Taiwan Sea and the East China Sea, which is the most frequent and most likely place for the Chinese military to provoke war. It's more important than other war zones, and Xi Jinping may still be unclear or may not have the right person for the job. Prior to this, the commanders of the Rocket Force, Ground Forces, Navy, Air Force, Strategic Support Force, and Armed Police Force have all changed. Among the various types of military forces, only the Air Force has an important position that's without any public information, which is the political member of the military. The position titled political members in China's military is unique compared to militaries in the West. Their primary task is to monitor other senior military officials, especially to keep abreast of possible coups, oversee each other with military officials, and make regular statements in support of the mandates of party directing the gun. This type of official is usually more interested in climbing the bureaucratic ladder than military officials in charge. They do little military work, but spend most of their time and energy on trying to get in front of their superiors and develop connections. Many of the newly promoted officers in this round of military restructuring are promoted at rocket speed. Their loyalty to Xi is undoubtedly the core criteria for selection. However, the formation of various forces and complex relationship networks in the military takes a long time to develop, and it remains a question whether the rocket-promoted officers can have the lower ranks or teams follow instructions. Liu Yajo, the general mentioned earlier, was a political member of China's National Defense University before he retired. He is also the son-in-law of late CCP senior leader and very influential in the military. In December 2021, news broke that he was placed under house arrest. He once spoke in support of Xi, but was recently rumored to have challenged Xi. He was suspected of having turned to the Jiang Zheng factions. The reason is that Liu is a general and a member of the Princeling Party, and the military generals are trained by the National Defense University, which means that Liu has a lot of students in the military. If Xi is forced to take action against such a representative and influential figure, it's likely that she has encountered considerable opposition in the military before the 20th National Congress. The 20th CCP National Congress will be held in the second half of 2022 and will determine whether she will be re-elected for a third term as party leader. If his re-election fails, the life of Xi and his family may be in danger because he has arrested so many senior officials and has made so many enemies during his 10-year anti-corruption campaign. On January 4th, Xi Jinping issued Military Commission Directive No. 1 for 2022. Compared to what was said in the previous two years, Xi has dropped the focus on war preparation. Instead, he proposed to grasp the changes in the security and military struggle situation in a precise fashion and asked to welcome the 20th CCP Congress. In other words, Xi now needs to be ready to defend himself against political enemies and military revolts. So far, Xi hasn't visited abroad for more than 23 months. The most likely reason is that Xi fears a coup if he leaves the country, and out of everything, Xi is most worried about the armed forces and the police of the CCP. Given the extremely alert state of Xi, he isn't 100% confident in his control of the military.